hello. Hello. Hi, thanks for Hi. calling Homework Hotline. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you have a question for us? Yes, I do, actually. What's your um, question? Using the properties of water to explain your answer, uh, why does sweat cool you down? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great science question. So um, this would probably be for a biology class or perhaps for an, an anatomy or physiology class. Um, so uh, in order to think about this question of why sweat actually cools us down, um, I think it's good to just kind of start by thinking about uh, do we experience this in our real life? So caller, have you ever had the experience of um, maybe your skin is wet for some reason, maybe you just got out of the pool, or maybe you uh, uh, got your hands wet from washing them, and then you feel breeze on them and your hands or your skin feels cool? Have you had that experience before? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so, so that's very similar to what's happening with sweat, and I think a lot of folks who I talk to about this think, you know, it's the water itself is actually, the water is cool, so the water is cooling me down. Uh, but in fact, what's happening is it has a lot to do with phase change. So water can take uh, three forms. We have liquid water, and then in gas form, it's going to be called steam, and in solid form, we call water ice, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the way to think about it is this. When we want to turn water into steam, when we want to turn liquid into gas, what we're doing is we're putting energy into it to make that happen. So you can think of, for example, a pot of boiling water on your stove. Can you picture okay. that? Yeah. yeah, so what we're doing there is we're heating the water. We're putting energy from the fire or from the uh, heating element on the stove to put energy into the water and effectively get it to change phase from liquid into gas. So when water changes, when a water molecule goes from being in liquid state to gas state, it has absorbed that energy that's going into it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So when you are running, let's say, let's say it's a hot day, and you're running, your body produces sweat by essentially just excreting water out of your sweat glands. And what you've got is just a little thin layer of water on your skin. And the wind blowing outside and perhaps the sun shining on your skin is going to evaporate some of that water. And it's the same thing that's happening to liquid water boiling on your stove. Liquid water on your skin is going to change phase to gas, to steam. And that phase change requires an absorption of water, or of, of energy, excuse me. So the water has to suck energy from its environment. In the case of on the stove, it's pulling the energy from the flame or the heating element. But on your skin, it's pulling it from the environment around it. So this water would literally be pulling heat energy from your skin to change phase, and that leaves your skin a little bit cooler because some of that heat energy has been pulled away. Does that make some sense? It does, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and, and just for a little additional piece, if you think about going the opposite direction, to go from liquid water to solid ice, the opposite is happening. Um, the, the water itself is giving up some of its energy. Uh, and so if you think about liquid water becoming solid ice, that environment, some of the energy inside that liquid water is going to escape to the outside environment, actually warming up the environment just a tiny amount. So it's really the, the opposite process happening. Make okay. sense? Yeah, thank you. Cool. Any follow-up questions? Uh, I think I'm good. Okay, great. Thanks so much for calling in. Thank you. Nice. Cool. I liked that question. Yeah, it's a good one. It's relevant. Something yes, it's relevant. That's right? a good way to put it. Yeah. It's relevant. Subscribe. Come on, push the button. You know yeah, you want, you want to. to. <laughs> Do it.